When I was in college, I had this awesome red truck. It was a Toyota Tacoma TRD package, four door extended bed for the dirt bikes. It was fast, it was loud, it was sleek, and I loved it. Problem was, is I had to commute from my home to college and from my home to work. I was driving about 35,000 miles a year and it just wasn't great to have a truck. So I went to the dealership and I traded my awesome like race truck for a tan Toyota Prius. <laughs> and the guy who sold me the car couldn't believe that I would trade this awesome truck for a Prius, but I did. And when I rolled up in the parking lot with some of my buddies, they said, new car, who dis? Like, who's this guy driving this Prius? It's just a catchy saying right now to say, who this? You know, you go to a reunion with friends, a high school reunion, and you see people who have either gained a lot of weight or maybe lost a lot of weight, and you're like, dang, you look different. Maybe you don't say that if they put on a lot of weight, but if they've lost a lot of weight, you say, wow, like, who is this new person? Who is this? Well, when we look in the Gospels, when we look in the Bible, things happen when people gave their lives to the Lord, especially when they gave their life to the Lord in the Spirit. When the Holy Spirit dwelt among people, He changed people. So I want to just give you a little quick word called uh, New Spirit who dis. What happens when the new spirit, the Holy Spirit, changes your life? When when Saul changed from someone who persecuted Christians to someone who just wrote a third of the New Testament, like from Saul to Paul, who is this guy? Who dis? What about Peter? We're going to focus a little bit on Peter real fast. Peter was somebody who was just a fisherman. Well, then Jesus comes along, calls him as one of his disciples, Peter's like in the top leadership level with Jesus, one of the three who's kind of in on the back, behind the scenes kind of stuff. He's the one that walks on water. Well, Peter's also the one that, that cuts off the soldier's ear when he's defending Jesus. Peter also denies Jesus three times. And then on the shore, when Jesus is standing on the shore, when he's cooking breakfast, Peter's the one that swims to Jesus on the shore and he has a conversation with Jesus and Jesus says, do you love me three times? And Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. You know that. And that's to wash away the three times that Jesus or that Peter denies Jesus. Well, Peter did all sorts of things. Then Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit and everything changes for Peter. Everything changes for the disciples on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in their lives. Let me read this to you. And if you read the Bible and you're not blown away by some of the stories in the Bible, this is one of those stories that should just make your head explode. Listen to this. This is Acts chapter two, verse one. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. All of the followers of Jesus were all together in one place. That's a big deal. After Jesus is sitting into heaven, all of his believers, they got together in one place. Verse two, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be, listen to this, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on them. All of them, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So they're all filled with the Holy Spirit. Everybody there who's watching this, was, were, they were amazed, they were perplexed. It says, they, they asked, what does it mean? Verse 13 says this, some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. They're saying, these guys are drunk. Peter steps in, Peter says, hey, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Certainly these people are not drunk. They've been filled with the spirit. And he says, verse 16, no, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all of these people. Verse 21, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, how do we as believers, how are we filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, it happens when we give our lives to the Lord. That comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Well, what does the Holy Spirit do in our lives? The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. It's, it's God living in us. It's Him leading and guiding us. It's our, it's our advocate. He's our counselor. It's the Spirit of truth. It's the spiritual gifts. It's the power of God. It's the help, the clarity. The fruits of the Spirit that are found in Galatians 5, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, those are given to us by who? By the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins because it's God, it's the truth of God living inside of us. So here's what I ask you today. Some ap quick applications. There's only three of them. Number one, are you drunk? <laughs> I'll say it again. Are you drunk? Are you living in such 
a way that people would question if you are intoxicated by alcohol. Are you living in such a way? Maybe you live so differently from what the world says. The world says, keep everything you got, never give, but maybe you tithe because that's what you believe that the Bible says. And you tell people that you give 10% of your income to the church and they're like, what? Are you drunk? Are you out of your mind? You say, no, actually I'm living my best life. John 10, 10, life to the full life with Jesus. So are you living in such a way that people would question your sanity, maybe question even if you are intoxicated. Now, don't go out into the world and just be crazy uh, because you think that's what it means. No, but just live in a way so much so that it's different from the world, so much for God that people may question, man, has that guy been drinking? And you say, no, it's only nine in the morning. Number two, new spirit, who this? Peter was forever changed. Paul was forever changed. All of the disciples were forever changed. I want you to be so influenced, so impacted, so drawn into the Holy Spirit that people go, wow, that, that, that's a different Zach. That's a different person than I met maybe five days ago, maybe five years ago, maybe 50 years ago, because they are just growing every day, walking with God. Every time somebody meets you, they should say, wow, I can tell that you are growing in your relationship with Jesus. You're walking away from that sin. You're not you know, diving into this or that. You are getting better and better by living in the Holy Spirit every day. You're becoming more and more Christ-like every day because you are saying, new spirit, dwell within me. I want to become somebody different. I want to be more like Christ. Last one. I want you to say this. I've got the power. Listen, Peter was forever changed with the Holy Spirit. He was forever changed when, when he saw a resurrected Savior on the beach who empowered him to go and spread the gospel. But it was not just the fact that Peter and the disciples saw a resurrected Jesus that let them live for him all the way into death. Peter went from fisherman to a follower of Christ to someone who was crucified for his faith upside down because he never lost track of what he was doing. Well, did he do that through his own strength? No, he did it through the power of the Holy Spirit. The word is very clear that all of our power, all the things that we do from God come from the Holy Spirit himself. So today, focus in on it. Say, I want the power of Jesus. I want to be different. I want people to see me as someone who is on fire for the Lord. And it is all through the power, not of yourself. It's not all on you. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. So let the Holy Spirit dwell within you and let him change you forever. Be blessed.